You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who art Ed? Who tried to spice it? Who art is Mr. Wood, art Ed, me. <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. I thought it was a great start. Welcome to Who Arted Weekly Art History for All Ages. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're looking at Edward Moybridge. Edward Moybridge was born on April 9th, 1830, in Kingston upon Thames in England. His father was a corn merchant, and a young Edward initially followed in the family business, but he had a spirit of adventure. In 1855, at the age of 25, he immigrated to the United States, first settling in New York City before making his way to the bustling, expanding city of San Francisco. When he arrived in San Francisco, Moybridge initially worked as a bookseller and publisher, but a serious stagecoach accident in Texas in 1860 left him with severe head injuries and double vision. He returned to England for treatment and recovery, and that process took several years. It was during this period of recuperation that he began to develop an interest in the new field of photography. When he returned to California in 1867, Moybridge adopted a more distinctive and archaic spelling of his name, switching it from the traditional E-D-W-A-R-D to E-A-D-W-E-A-R-D, and he began a career as a professional photographer. He quickly gained recognition for his stunning landscape photographs, particularly his panoramic views of Yosemite Valley and his images of the developing American West. These large format photographs were technically impressive and captured the grandeur of the untamed wilderness. His fame grew, leading to an interesting proposal in 1872 from Leland Stanford, the former governor of California, a railroad tycoon, and, as we'll find out, a passionate racehorse owner. Stanford had a burning question. Do all four hooves of a horse leave the ground simultaneously during a gallop? This was actually a hotly debated topic, and the conventional wisdom, often depicted in art, suggested they didn't. Stanford, though, had bet $25,000 that, yes, all four hooves of a horse would leave the ground simultaneously during a gallop. So Stanford asked Moybridge to try to photograph a horse in mid-gallop in order to prove he was right. The initial attempt in 1872 was challenging due to the limitations of photographic technology at the time. Moybridge used a single camera, and while he was able to capture some blurry images that hinted at all four hooves being airborne, they weren't conclusive. The project was then put on hold for a few years due to a horrific personal event. I don't want to get into the grisly details, but Moybridge discovered his wife had been unfaithful and he murdered her lover in 1874. He would eventually be acquitted of the crime, claiming justifiable homicide. But obviously, that took his attention away from the whole horse photography thing. After his acquittal, Moybridge traveled to Central America, taking more photographs, before returning to California in 1877. Stanford, though, was still eager to solve this horse mystery, and he recommissioned Moybridge. Moybridge had access to more advanced equipment, and he set to work. He set up an elaborate system on Stanford's farm in Palo Alto. He experimented with various camera setups, finally devising a method that involved a series of cameras triggered in rapid succession. It was groundbreaking. He used 12 cameras placed side by side along a track. Threads were stretched across the track, and as the horse galloped past, it would break these threads, which in turn triggered the shutters of the cameras. This ingenious setup allowed him to capture a sequence of still images each showing a different phase of the horse's stride. The success of these experiments in 1878 was phenomenal. Moybridge not only proved that all four hooves do indeed leave the ground during a gallop, but also opened up a whole new realm of understanding animal and human locomotion. In 
His work laid the foundation for the scientific study of movement and profoundly influenced the development of cinematography. He called the work The Horse in Motion. The most famous set consists of 12 sequential photographs, often represented as a grid showcasing a racehorse named Sally Gardner. Each image is a collodion print, a common photographic process at the time with sharp detail and rich tonal range. Collodion prints were made using a glass plate coated in a sticky substance called collodion, which is a solution of nitrated cotton dissolved in ether and alcohol. The plate was then dipped in a solution of silver nitrate to make it sensitive to light, and the photographer would expose the plate in the camera and develop it all while the plate was still wet, which is why it's often called a wet plate process. It's just amazing to think in such early days of photography, he's taking these glass plate cameras, I mean a dozen of them, positioned 21 inches apart very precisely along a 20-foot track. And each was fitted with a fast shutter that opened for just a fraction of a second, like a thousandth of a second, although the exact shutter speed is also sort of a point of debate. As the horse gallops past, it breaks these threads that were stretched across the track, triggering the shutters sequentially, and this allowed him to freeze moments in time that were imperceptible to the human eye before that. And keeping with like this almost scientific study, the background was a white sheet marked with vertical lines to help track the horse's position. It's just amazing how technical and elaborate the setup was, but that was crucial to its success in capturing this rapid movement with such clarity. The primary goal was to settle the debate about whether all four hooves of a horse leave the ground during a gallop. And the images reveal that, yes, indeed, the horse hooves were all airborne, but it's so much more than that. By breaking down movement into discrete, measurable units, Moybridge not only answered Leland Stanford's question, but he also inspired other innovators, most notably Etienne Jules Meret in France, who developed his own photographic gun to capture sequence of movement in a single plate. Moybridge would later on invent the Zoopraxiscope, a device that projected his photographic sequences in rapid succession to create the illusion of movement, and that directly paved the way for the invention of the motion picture camera and projector. And it wasn't just about the technology. Artists working in traditional drawings, paintings, and printmaking were also greatly influenced by his findings, leading to more accurate and dynamic depictions of animals and humans in motion. The horse in motion may have started off just as a bit of scientific inquiry to satisfy the curiosity and settle the bed of a wealthy benefactor, but... Ultimately, it ushered in a new era of cinema, forever changing how we perceive and capture the world around us. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.